Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for <coughs> Strange New World Season 2 Episode 10, Hedge Money. This video is part of a series of videos where I review episodes of uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So I have to start with a spoiler warning for Strange New Worlds up to the Season 2 finale, um, Hedge Money. If you have not seen up to this point, you will not want to watch this video. Otherwise, some things will be spoiled for you. So... All right, I'm just going to cut to it. <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush here. This is a cliffhanger. Um, I didn't see that coming, to be honest. In fact, towards the end of the episode, I was thinking, like, it actually looked like there is a way they could have wrapped it up. And I was like, I really hope they wrap it up. I really hope that they don't leave it open-ended like they did last season with, ooh, Una's put on trial. Um, but, um, not only did they leave it open-ended, it was a flat-out cliffing. <laughs> it was flat-out realizing this is just part one of hopefully two. Um, maybe three, you don't know. You don't know. Um, so, and here's the thing. I know that cliffhangers, especially the end of the season, like cliffhangers, is a tradition in Star Trek, particularly Next Gen. Um, DS9 didn't really do it. They did more of the inferences. In fact, I think they were sort of forbidden from doing it when the writers wanted to. Voyager did it um, quite a bit. Although Deep Space Nine kind of did in Season 5 with the Dominion's takeover arc, but that wasn't a straightforward two-parter. <laughs> um, anywho, yeah, so this is a Star Trek tradition, so it's not like I'm saying, oh, how dare they do this. I mean, it makes sense that they do it. It's been done before, and they want to keep the tradition. But... And also, like, looking back at this episode in retrospect, after I know it's a cliffhanger, I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. It does play a lot as a part one. Has their, like, setting the stage, you know, oh, there's, there's this mission we need to go on. And I think it was on the back of my mind while as I was watching this episode. I just didn't want to acknowledge it. I, I was thinking, no, this is a standalone episode. Of, of course it's a standalone episode. Um, but, of course, looking back on it, I was like, oh, no, yeah, it play, totally plays like a part one. Um, yeah, like, they, they have the situation, and they could go rescue people. They're getting geared up. Like, just the amount of time they spent, like, setting up for it is to me that was the giveaway that was the the that this is a part one and if it wasn't a part one if it was a standalone episode then the pacing would be a bit lopsided um and you know i'm a bit dis it's the thing that disappoints me is not that it's a cliffing and we gotta wait till season three to get the resolution, the thing that disappoints me is who knows when the hell season three will come because of the strikes that are ongoing, which is something they didn't know, of course, when they made this episode. So we may have to wait um, longer, which is going to suck. <laughs> but, um, and the cliffhanger in particular is the colonists, along with a few of our main characters, that have been beamed up by the Gorn, which. But some of those main characters, Mbaga and um, um, Kirk, what's his name? Blanking on his first name. You know, Jim's brother. <laughs> what? Um, Sam. Sam Kirk, that's it. Um, we know that they they live because they appear in the original series. Or at least, you know, Sam Kirk dies in the original series but he has to be alive here he has to survive this in order to be alive to die in the original series and um of course Mbaga was a doctor who appeared a couple times in the original series so uh we know that they're gonna live but the question is how how they and plus they wouldn't kill off half their main characters <laughs> um 
And it says likely that Ortegas and Jan will survive as well. But um, still, it's a pretty damning cliffhanger. It's a pretty effective one. I w it was like when they were beaming everyone up. Um, and I saw, you know, they showed the colonists with their main characters getting ready to beam up, and they saw them beam them up, and when they went back to the Enterprise, it was like, oh, we can't beam up our crew. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You already beamed them up. And then apparently the Gorn got to them first. How did, it, did the Gorn know they were there? If so, why were they just leaving them alone? Uh, maybe they had their reasons. Now... <sighs> A lot of this episode is going to be hard for me to judge without seeing the second part. So maybe I'll have a clear um, picture of how this story works. Because I've only seen the first half. <laughs> and, and so maybe I'll have a clear picture of how it works um, once we get the second part. But, um... Because I think they're hinting at the Gorn being sort of more intelligent. And they're hinting at that they can be negotiated with and reasoned with. And in fact, that's something that um, the original episode they appeared in, the arena from the original series, tried to make clear that they came off as hostile monsters, but really they were just protecting their own territory, and really they could be reason negotiated with. And and I think that was set up for in this episode with... Uh, I was going to call him Picard. Pike's conversation with April when, um, you know, April was suggesting that, you know, they, they could be negotiated with, and Pike's just like, they're monsters... And it's like, are you sure? It's like, yes, they're just monsters. And that's how they've been portrayed so far. So I feel like they're setting up for a deeper sort of meaning, a resolution. Or, and Pike was kind of hinting at with Patel when they're down on the planet that perhaps there's more to them. So if we don't get a follow-up on that, I'll be very disappointed. So, again, it's hard for me to... This is obvious, uh, I think, obvious what this episode is setting up for. So, But it's hard for me to judge the episode because I haven't seen the payoff yet. <laughs> um, but as for the episode itself, it was a really good. It was a really suspenseful one. I think it was very effective. I think it's way better than the Gorn Baby episode we got in season one that because that was just a rip off of Aliens. I'm sorry, it was a direct rip off of Aliens. Uh, I talked about that in my review of that episode. And so this was much better. This is something more unique. I suppose it's more akin to the episode four of season one where the where we had like this Gorn standoff hiding from them in the gas giant. Although that was different. And to be honest, I, I think I, I, a lot of people liked that episode a lot more than I did, to be fair. But I still liked it. But I think I like this episode more. Um, but again, if the payoff in part two is not good, then that might retroactively change my opinion of it. But uh, for now, like this... From what I've seen so far, it's... Yeah, this was... I was really engaged having the crisis with Patel on the planet. And, um, you know, Pike going on his away mission. And then them, them coming up with the plan to crash the saucer section of the um, destroyed ship into uh, the, the, you know, Gorn device that was blocking sensors and communication. Like, it was all... Very suspenseful in the way they came, like a horror coming up with this crazy plan and going to Pella and Spock saying he's the only one who could execute it. And it's great seeing um, Una Chin Riley in command. It's something I don't think we've seen enough of. So that w that was cool. I always like that. I always think they underutilize that character. I want to see them utilize her more next season. Um, and. Um, yeah, and just how suspenseful it was when they were on the planet when they're hiding from the Gorn babies. And um, so now I got to talk about Scotty. 
So when, and I'm sure everyone felt this way, when he first appeared, and they didn't say who he was, but he was, as soon as he started speaking with the Scottish accent, I'm like, that, that's Scotty. <laughs> Obviously, that's Scotty. And so when he said Montgomery Scott, I was like, yeah, of course you are. Um, and I've been kind of critical of them including legacy characters and it seems like they're going to keep doing this. Um, but I think this is a good good use of Scotty. I think the actor who played him did a good job. Um, maybe better than Simon Pegg because Simon Pegg was just a bit too comedic and over the top. Or at least in the 2009 one and beyond he was better. But, um, but I like the... It reminded me a lot of Simon Pegg's performance. <laughs> the, the sort of... Um, yeah, just the, the tongue-in-cheek way that he, he was speaking. And like, oh, you're not Gorn? Why'd you fall into my Gorn trap? And stuff like that. <laughs> um, but how he's like this engineering genius. Of course, because Scotty's got to be an engineering genius. Um, so I like the use of Scotty, actually is my ultimate conclusion. I think he was used well. I like the actor who played him. I have no issues with any of this. It, it all worked for me. So even though I've been critical of using legacy characters in the past, um, I like this. Now, one of the major issues I have with this episode is, I mean, it's kind of just a tv trope you just gotta go with but the fact that nurse chapel happens to be the only one on this entire ship who survived just by coincidence everyone else who cares about everyone else they're dead but she just happened to survive when absolutely no one else did and she wakes up just in time to see spot coming Uh, yeah, you just gotta go with the flow and stuff like that. Uh, it is it is a bit ridiculous, I think. But I like the the Gorn and the suit, like obviously trying to access the ship because they kept saying access denied, or passcode denied, or something. They were trying to um, get intel on Starfleet, which again does imply something more intelligent than monsters but again they need to expand upon this which i hope they do but seeing the like spacesuit fight between spock and and, and chapel and the gorn was, was awesome it was a really good a suspenseful fight scene uh worked i liked the way the gorn looked um that was cool and you know i've been critical of strange new worlds use of the gorn and sort of, you know, ret retconning it so that they're more like aliens <laughs> from the Xenomorphs from the Aliens movies. But, um, I, I like the use of it here, and I think they can kind of course correct if, if they play their cards right, as uh, Kirk would say. <laughs> so, hopefully... Um, yeah, I'm very hopeful that the part two will be really good and resolve. And also, getting back to the cliffhanger, it, it was an effective cliffhanger because Pike was kind of just stunned. He was just didn't know what to do. He and this is we'd never seen him like this before. Just when they were like orders, Captain orders, and they're being attacked by four Gorn ships, but their people are on one of those ships, and he's just like. Ugh. You know, and the proper thing to do would be to retreat, which is what Starfleet ordered them to do, but he, of course, doesn't want to just leave his people to the Gorn. Um, so, yeah, so that's an effective cliffhanger. We do know that Scotty has that device that he's working with Pella to install in the Enterprise that hides them from the Gorn sensors, which... That's a Chekhov's gun right there, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> that is definitely going to come into play in Part 2. And if it doesn't, then that, that would be a big uh, bad writing misuse of Chekhov's gun. you got to pay it off. Um, so so that's so it's an interesting setup. The setup's there. Um, 
Patel getting infected by the Gorn babies. Again, I hate this concept because it's too much like aliens, but they've it's already been established, so they gotta roll with it. I honestly don't know what's gonna happen with her because a lot of people predicted that she would die. I feel like if she would die, that would be too that would be the expected outcome, so it makes me feel like they're not going to do that. Um it was very emotional, uh, emotionally effective in this episode when Pike found out. It, that was a really big gut punch because I think they've been doing a really good job building their relationship. Because in season one, I didn't really g get their relationship together. Um, I, I just thought they were friends with benefits. But here in season two, they came up more as an actual couple. Um... And, and so, yeah, so they earned that, the moment where he's, like, she's just wants to sacrifice herself. She even brought up Hammer and how he sacrificed himself, and, and, and Pike's like, no, there's got to be a better way. Um, and, and Chapel talking about it, she'll do anything um, she can to save him. By the way, I think it's a bit ridiculous that Chapel was, you know, in this near-death situation and, and traumatized and physically injured. And as soon as she boards, beams aboard the Enterprise, they put her straight to work. I didn't, I didn't buy that. That's basically because Mbaga's on the planet, so they need a main character and, and sick bay to look after. They can't just have some random nurse. That's all that was, but it did seem like... Isn't that a bit ridiculous? <laughs> like, she just, she was near death and was in this life or death, you know, struggle situation and she was injured and shouldn't she be, like, looked after first? No. That's, but again, that's kind of a roll with the TV uh, thing going on. So, yeah, and then the moments we saw with Ortega's with the shuttle where she was like colliding into the planet we saw part of that from the trailer that was really good i was actually expecting that in all the way back in the episode four when ortegas was going to go to the on the away mission when she didn't go i was like what she has to do that shuttle thing but but apparently that was in this episode <laughs> um and it was cool i liked it, it showed her character and how like how much fun she was having, like, the look, she had a huge smile on her face, where Pike was just, like, freaking out, and everyone else was, like, you know, um, dealing with the heavy turbulence, but by the way, this is a shuttlecraft trap that's meant to travel in space, that has artificial gravity and artificial, uh, air, should they really be affected by, um, fall, falling like that, like the, the G-force or whatever, since they have their magical, you know, inertial dampeners and shit. Yeah, just... Because they travel... The Enterprise travels at warp. And if they didn't have inertial dampeners, they'd all be spots on the wall. So, uh, how come... If they can, you know... And a shuttle can travel at warp, or at least some of them. I don't know if this one can. Maybe the original series. No, I think some of the original series ones could. So they can travel at warp and not be spots on the wall, so they shouldn't be affected by this falling through the atmosphere like this. Uh, that's my nerdy hat on. <laughs> anyway, and it's just a minor nitpick. It doesn't actually affect how I feel about this episode. Uh, anyway, I, my rating for Hedgemony um, out of 10, I think I'm going to give this episode a 9. Um, excellent. And of course, this is with the little asterisks because it's subject to change depending on how good or bad part two is but um it yeah it was a definitely a really effective episode it was very suspenseful it had me intrigued i'm just really pissed off that i went away for god knows how long maybe two years before i see the resolution to this but because it was so good, because it was so engaging, it was suspenseful, it was emotionally effective. Um, so yeah, I thought it was pretty powerful. Not quite as good as last year's finale, I, I do have to say. That one blew me away. It was an instant classic. This one I wouldn't say is. 
an instant classic. Um, it could be elevated by part two, depending on how they go with it, but it was still good. It was a good episode um, that I liked. So uh, that is it for my review of a Strange New World Season 2 finale. So... Next week, I will be back on Thursday to do a live discussion a week from now. Uh, I'll be joined by Alyssa and Darren, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully it will be on Thursday, but that's the plan at the moment. Thursday night, uh, 9 p.m. East Coast time, uh, to do to talk all about uh, Season 2 of Strange New Worlds. And the day before that, on Wednesday, I'm actually going to release my own personal Season 2 review of Strange New Worlds. Um, so be sure to keep an eye out for those. Um, and check out my channel as I can continue to cover Star Trek. Um, also covering Star Trek Next Generation one episode at a time at the moment. And uh, many other videos and many other shows as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>